Hi, I'm Megan, and today I'll be demonstrating how to use KDB AI to perform semantic search on PDF documents. If you'd like to follow along with me, head on over to our KDB AI website and sign up for a free KDB AI Cloud account. You can do this by hitting the button in the top right hand corner as indicated here. And when signed in, you'll be greeted with this page. If you'd like to know more about what this page entails and more about the sign up process, click the video in the link below. Next, you'll need a link to this example and the data set I'm using. To do this, click the Learning Hub tab at the top of the page, and if you scroll down, you'll see a few examples. Today, we'll be using the document search one. So what is semantic search and why is it useful? Semantic search allows users to perform searches based on the meaning or similarity of the data rather than exact matches. The initial query is converted to a vector embedding and then paired with similar embeddings that exist within that database. This means that even if the query and the data within that database are not identical, the system can still identify and retrieve the most relevant results based on their semantic search. So let's get started with this example. First, we'll load and split our PDF document. Splitting, also known as chunking, is a crucial step ahead of running semantic search. Next, we'll create some vector embeddings and store these in our KDB AI database. And finally, we'll run semantic search to retrieve any similar records. Before we begin, there's just some packages that need to be imported. So this first library is how we're going to load our PDF document and Spacey will be used to split our document. Next, these are some libraries to create our vector embeddings, and we've chosen to use sentence transformers. And finally, these are some libraries needed for our vector database. The most important one being KDB AI client, as it allows us to speak to KDB AI. Here we're loading Spacey English Corpus, for as I mentioned before, this will be used to split our document. And here we're just configuring our console and defining any helper functions that are needed. Let's move on to loading our PDF data. We will be using this PY PDF2 reader to load in our document, and we'll concatenate this to make it all one document. The document we'll be using today is a research paper presenting information on the formation of interstellar objects in the Milky Way. And you can view this research paper using this link here. Now we will use the spacey model to split our data into sentences. This spacey model is a pre-trained model used for English text processing. So it splits data based on linguistic rules and patterns rather than full stops and delimiters. There are many different ways to chunk your data. It doesn't have to be into sentences. We're using a sentence transformer model to create our vector embeddings, hence why we're chunking our data into sentences. The method you choose to chunk your data can vary depending on a few different factors, like the model you use to create your vector embeddings, the size of your data input, and if you want to incorporate large language models. If we run the cell, you can see now that we've got 393 sentences. And if we index into the first one, you can see we're just getting the title and the top section of the document. But if we index in a wee bit further, you can see here now that we've got a number of different sentences. As mentioned previously, we're going to be using a sentence transformer model. There's over 100 different types of sentence transformer models available, and you can check them out using this Hugging Face link provided. We're able to grab our chosen model referencing the sentence transformer library. Then we will use model.encode to turn raw text from the sentences into a vector. Now that we've created our, our embeddings, we can convert these to a pandas data frame. You can see here that we now have two columns, the first one being the vectors we've just created and the second one being the sentences with the raw text. Now we're ready to store our embeddings in our KDB AI database. The first thing we'll need to do is connect to our KDB AI session. And to do this, you'll need to log in to KDB AI Cloud and all you'll need is your endpoint and your API key below. If you're on the cell, you'll be prompted to enter both in here and if you run the cell below that, it'll connect you to your KDB AI session. Now that we're connected, we're going to define a table schema for our KDB AI table, where we will store our embeddings. We want this to look the same as our Pandas data frame that was shown previously in the notebook. 
we're going to have two columns, vectors and sentences. To do this, there's a few things we need to pass in here. The first being the dimensions. This is why we ran len earlier in the notebook, and you can see here we're passing the output, which is 384. The next thing is metric, which refers to the Euclidean distance. You can learn more about this and the different metrics in our learning hub under methods of similarity. Finally, we have type, and the type here is the type of index. With KDB AI, we have a few different indexing methods, such as HNSW, IVF, IVFPQ, and FLAT. We're going to be using the HNSW one as it's suitable for performing semantic search on text data. This cell below is to check we don't have that table already defined on KDB AI, which I don't, but it's always good to check. This session.create table will create our table. Um, we're going to call it PDF and we're going to pass it the PDF schema. So let's fill in our data and pass in that data frame we prepared earlier. And if we query that again, we should now see the data is saved to KDB AI. Once that's loaded, we're ready to do our semantic search. First, we need to embed our search term. And you want to do this using the same sentence transformer model as we used before. We're going to pass the statement in and again use model.encode to encode it into numerical embeddings. And then we're going to run table.search. And this is searching our KDBAI table for the three nearest neighbors returned. You can see the output looks similar to our KDBAI table with an additional column, which is NN underscore distance, which stands for nearest neighbor distance. And you can see we have a range of different distances here. This is Euclidean distance or L2 similarity measure. So let's change the column width and have a look at the sentences themselves. The first two do mention what our statement talks about. For example, here it says the Milky Way and it mentions what we're talking about. But it isn't until the third statement that we get the answer we're actually looking for. So this shows that our model is good, but we had to look down a few levels to get the most similar result. In search two here, you'll see we're following the exact same steps and you'll see that the neighbor distance is more promising. But I think following on from this, you would need to feed these results back into a large language model and do some prompt engineering to produce this result in a more human readable form. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel to keep up to date with the latest from KX.